Alec. Um, it's nice to see you this morning, Joe. Um, and it looks like we have a couple of people um, on the line. So just want to welcome you to our presentation today called Assistive Devices Explained. Do you have the latest tools for the job of living? Um, my name is Lisa Relic. I work with community and professional organizations um, for Hebrew Senior Life. So we're lucky to have um, two members of our team from uh, physical therapy at um, Newbridge on the Charles and at our campus in Roslindale, Sarah Charest. She's the manager of the team. She's been with uh, an occupational therapist for over 20 years. She's the manager of the long-term chronic care and outpatient therapy at Hebrew Senior Life for the last 18 years. So she's been with us for a long time. And Rochelle Cardin, who's a physical therapist. Um, she's been a physical therapist for four years and she works at part of the outpatient physical therapy staff for Hebrew, Rehabil Hebrew Rehabilitation Center at Newbridge on the Trials for the last three years. So Rochelle and um, Sarah will be doing the presentation today. Um, as I mentioned, um, Hebrew Senior Life is um, a continuing care retirement community, or we have two continuing care retirement communities in the local area at Dedham and um, in Canton, our Orchard Cove community. But in addition to that, we have um, three other campuses in the area, uh, as well as I, I mentioned Newbridge in Canton already, and we have um, center communities of Brookline, Jack Satter House in Revere, and um, the Simon Fireman community in Randolph. And those three are all um, supportive housing sites. We also offer inpatient care at both of the CCRCs, Newbridge and Orchard Cove, which is long-term chronic care, short-term rehab. Um, and we also offer the, those in Roslindale. Outpatient care is a little bit about what we're gonna be talking today. The Rehabilitation Therapies Group um, it has, has services available at both Dedham and Roslindale. And then we also have the Woke Center for Memory Health in Roslindale, as well as a medical practice at our Brookline community. And then lastly, we offer in-home care, which is home health, personal care, so which is non-medical home care and palliative and hospital care, hospice care. So as you can see, um, we offer the full continuum of services and we support more than 3000 seniors every single day um, through our services. So that just gives you a, a highlight of what we offer at Hebrew Senior Life. And I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah and Rochelle to talk about today's presentation and um, the tools of daily living. Hi, Lisa, in thank you. In terms of questions, if you have, sorry, I was just gonna mention, yeah. if you have questions, you can put them in the chat or at the end of the presentation, if you wanna raise your hand, um, I'm sure they'd be glad to take questions. So thanks again for joining us on this beautiful Monday morning and look forward to hearing the presentation. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Rochelle and I are really, really excited to, to join you guys today. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit about um, what our goals of are the presentation. Um, we're going to talk about recommendations to keep you safe and independent, um, low tech, adaptive equipment to make living easier. We're going to talk about assistive devices for navigating home and community, and then where to get help and assistance if needed with some, some tips and tricks. I'm going to start with a with a very brief overview of you know kind of why we are concerned about safety and um, keeping people independent and fall free. Um, you know, one in five falls causes serious injuries, and each year uh, more than one out of four people fall. Um, and you know, with falls becomes fear of falling, and I'm sure you've heard this before. Um, but today we're going to consider what you do in your home and all the things that you that you do um, and, and ways to keep you safe and independent. So for general safety recommendations, um, obviously reducing clutter is a big uh, recommendation that we make, providing a clear walking path for, um, you know, from your bed to the bathroom, from the living room to the kitchen, maintaining appropriate space for your assistive device. Um, so you're not tripping or hitting things. Cords, lights and electronics, keeping things out of the pathways. Um, and then everyone's favorite topic is a throw rug. Um, everyone loves their throw rugs and the therapists love to get rid of them. 
Um, so if you if you have throw rugs or dec decorative rugs, those are um, a significant tripping hazard and we wanna make sure that um, you, they're secured or um, not used. Just some, some general body mechanics um, uh, techniques you know, most falls happen when people are bending or reaching or kind of, you know, going over their base of support. So positioning your closet shelves between eye and hip level, uh, positioning your dishes, um, keeping keeping your dishes right at, at that level so you, that you're not having to reach or use a step stool. Um, lighting is very important for fall prevention. There's, you know, a, a lot of uh, things on the market like smart devices to turn on and turn off the lights for you so you don't have to get up um, or that you can you know turn on lights before you even enter the room um, and those are pretty easy to set up through google or um, even just the light bulbs um, consider you know access to the home you know how 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 are you getting in are there stairs are there good railings um, do you need a ramp and what's the lighting like at night so we'll get into the nitty gritty. These are just some 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 um, devices that we would recommend as therapists. Um, as I said, I'm an occupational therapist, which does not mean I help people find jobs. Um, it actually means that I use a variety of techniques and, and education um, and equipment to teach people how to do the job of living, which, um, you know, after uh, hospitalization, an illness, an injury, um, sometimes things are a little bit trickier to do. So that's when an OT comes into mind. So we, we work on what we call ADLs, which are the activities of daily living. So let's talk about getting in and out of bed. There's a few different um, bed rails, uh, U-bars, some attach right to the match to the bed frame, very sturdy, um, and some go right underneath the mattress. Um, again, this would just be to you know help you to pull yourself up, help you to stand without having to necessarily raise the height of the bed. The bathroom, as we know, is a um, a place where a lot of falls happen, unfortunately. You know, due to do the you know wet floors surfaces um, that sort of thing so there's there's a lot of uh, different varieties of tub chairs and tub benches obviously if you have a, a walk-in shower that's the best thing uh, for safety and energy conservation but again if you if you need to outfit your current bathroom these are, are really inexpensive um, but very helpful so you see one, the one on the right goes outside of the tub. So you would slide, slide on that and, and then slide your feet in where the other, the one on the left, you'd have to um, sit and then swing your legs in. Grab bars are huge in the bathroom. We recommend them to everybody. Um, there's a difference between a grab bar and a towel bar. Um, grab bars are secured uh, heavy duty with anchored um, to studs. Towel bars usually aren't. They're not interchangeable. Um, you, if, you, if you need grab bars, usually we have somebody have a handyman install them uh, into the tile. But there also are removable grab bars. If you are visiting family or um, these are a nice option so that you'd have something to, to hold on to. Or if you didn't wanna you know, put holes in your tile. <laughs> um, the, the, the toilet itself, um, lots of different, uh, devices for this. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen Grace and Frankie. Um, it's one of my favorite shows. And there's a whole episode where Jane Fonda gets stuck on a toilet. Um, so if she had something like this, um, she would have been better off. But there's um, a toilet riser, which just increases the height of the toilet. There's uh, the, the riser with arms. And then there's the, a commode, which can go on top of a standard toilet. But it's also really nice um, if you have an injury or you're feeling ill, you can put that right at the bedside and you wouldn't have to walk right to the bathroom. Okay, moving on. A Lot of information here. Um, again, we'll have time for questions, but please don't hesitate to, to, to ask me anything when through the chat um, or just wave, because I can see you. Okay. So getting dressed. Um, there's a lot of, uh, again, low, very low tech uh, devices. The, the item on the left is called a dressing stick, has a hook on one end and sort of a, 
a curved piece on, on the other. It's great for helping put on, um, putting on sweaters or sweatshirts. Um, it's good for, for putting on pants, the middle picture. Again, what we're trying to avoid is reaching, bending, twisting for a variety of reasons. Maybe you have vertigo and, and, and bending over to put your shoes and socks on is, is difficult. Maybe you have back pain and that makes it difficult. Um, so, so we're just trying to, to educate you on some of the things that are out there. Again, very affordable, very low tech devices. Um, on the right hand um, is um, a sock aid. Um, these are great. Um, and uh, moving on, we have a, a, a compression stocking aids. The, this is one of the, the, the hardest thing that I think people have trouble with are putting on their compression stockings. Sometimes that's the only reason they may need help in the home. Um, so there are a couple of devices out there. Uh, the one on the left is to put the stocking on. Um, it holds it nice and open. Um, so you can slide your foot in and, and pull up. And the one on the right is um, to, take your, to take the stockings off. Um, again, these are all available on Amazon. We have, uh, we have a whole slide at the end that has um, where, we, where you can get any of these things. Um, a shoe helper. So this is a version of a shoe horn, um, but it stays right on the back of your shoe. So, so if, you, if you have to slide your, your foot in, um, this keeps it nice and open and easy for you to do. Then there's elastic shoelaces, um, which prevent you from having to tie your shoes. They keep it secure, but um, easy to, to, um, to maintain, not having to tie it. Oops, paused here. Okay, um, just a couple of things that I found um, are very helpful for people. Um, there's, you know, there's there's adaptive clothing all on the market. Um, things that look really nice. So if you have trouble with buttons, there's sometimes there's Velcro um, underneath the buttons. I found this um, this leather belt that was um, very easy for people to use, it's, um, but it looks just like a regular belt. On the right here is a, as a tool that you can use to put your jewelry on, bracelets and that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, moving on, so for um, eating or writing, if you have tremors, if you have um, arthritis, um, or, or really anything that, that makes it challenging to hold something small, there's a variety of built up handles um, there's weighted, um, weighted equipment, which can help with the tremors and stability, tons of options out there. These, these utensils, they actually can curve as well. So if you don't have good wrist range of motion, um, or you're stiff in your wrist, um, you can, you can use those and it makes a world of difference for people. Um, everybody I'm sure has a jar opener. There's some heavy duty ones that, um, they make it super easy. They're very thick called Dyson. Um, and there's also electronic jar openers, um, obviously can openers. Um, there's these, one complaint I get a lot from my patients are eye drops and having to put eye drops in and hold the eye drops. So this is something that's on the market right now, um, which holds the eye drops um, in place so that you can easily um, use, uh, squeeze it, um, and it makes it really easy for people. Again, found that on Amazon. So very readily available for people to use. Other tools, um, this, this, this one on the left is a five-in-one opener. It does jars, it does cans, it does, um, it does water bottles, which are always tricky for people. Um, again, this was $6 on Amazon. So I'm not getting any feedback or kickback from Amazon. <laughs> I just know that um, people, you know, it's it's so easy for people to use, and most people have used it. So, again, I have I have some resources at the end of the presentation. Um, on the right here is something I found, which is a, a knob turner. It fits on a variety of knobs, so stoves, um, any any sort of um, device that has that knob, which may be tricky for people to use with with limited range of motion or or arthritis. Um, there's a variety of grooming tools, 
that are out there, longer um, combs and brushes. Again, building up a small handle for this razor. And there's even one-handed nail clippers to use. Um, so again, you know, thinking about things that are challenging, there's usually some sort of equipment that can help with that. So think about your own life and, and see if there's anything that this resonates with. Uh, the remote control is always a big one. Um, this one on the left is actually something that Verizon gives out. Um, if you ask them for it, it's, the, it's their remote um, and they have, a, it's a low vision, but big button remote as well. Um, there's card holders and I included, because it's springtime, I included a, some pictures of some adaptive gardening tools. Hope you can get out there. These would lim eliminate bending and reaching. Um, locks and keys are always challenging. They do make um, key holders that go right on the, the key, helps with the sur surface area and makes it easier to unlock your front door. Um, if that's still a challenge, they, they do make you know keypad locks, which are um, pretty easy to install and you know eliminates the need of a key altogether. There's a lot of um, of devices to help people in and out of the car. Um, at Hebrew Senior Life, we do um, car fits events, which is a, um, a really fun and free event where we look at how patients and, and people in the community get in and out of their car and, and the ergonomics of their car set up for um, safe driving. Um, so be on the lookout for, for those. We do those a couple times a year. Um, we haven't done one yet since, since we've been back from COVID, but um, we're looking forward to scheduling a car fit event. Um, but this here, um, the red picture in the middle that the gentleman is using is called a handy bar. Um, and that just that just hooks right onto your the, the door, the door uh, hardware, and it gives a nice um, lever to push yourself up. There's also cushions in the chair uh, for, your, for your car seat. You can um, makes it easy to, to get in and out, to get comfortable. And then there's even a seatbelt grabber um, so that you can pull without having to reach um, if, if your shoulders are bothering you. So just that's, there's a ton of things. Um, so if there's a problem, usually an OT can help you solve it. Um, so that, that's my spiel. Um, Rochelle, I'm gonna turn over to my colleague, Rochelle, who's a physical therapist. She'll talk a little bit about um, all the assistive devices that are out there for walking. Um, and fall prevention. Excellent. Thanks so much, Sarah. You're welcome. So yeah, we're going to move on now and talk a little bit more about uh, physical mobility in the environment. So more about walking now. And everybody at some point in their lives might feel a little unsteady when they're moving around. Uh, if you find yourself feeling that way, holding on to furniture, holding on to walls, holding on to counters to try and catch yourself. Certainly if you've had any falls or any near falls, uh, those are situations where you might be appropriate to consider an assistive device. And actually, Sarah, can you back up just one for me? Sorry. Thank you, perfect. Um, so some of the situations that might make an assistive device helpful for you is if you're experiencing weakness for any reason, you know, loss of strength. Certainly in this last year, we've all been moving around less. So we all are a bit more deconditioned than we would have been had, had COVID not come into our lives. Uh, if you have an injury or maybe a joint replacement, you know, you might also need to, uh, to consider an, an assistive device, any kind of pain, low back pain, super common. So we included that here and balance issues. Sarah mentioned vertigo. That's a good example. Um, so those kinds of things, it can be helpful to have a little extra support when you're walking. And the most important thing to consider when you're thinking about an assistive assistive device is to think about it like medication. You would never take your neighbor's pain medication or their hypertension medication. So it's the same thing with an assistive, assistive device. You shouldn't just take a cane or a walker from a friend. You should really have a referral from a, from a doctor to see a physical therapist so we can look at your walking, your balance, your strength, make a recommendation about the right kind of device for you because not every device is appropriate for every person. Then we can fit that device to, to meet your height and your weight and train you in the appropriate use. The last thing we wanna do is have someone use a device that's designed to make them safer, but makes them less safe. So working with a physical therapist for that assessment is really important. All right, thanks Sarah, we can move on. 
Awesome, thanks. So a bunch of different types of devices that we'll talk about today, canes, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, different types of canes with extra support, rollators, which is a kind of walker, standard metal folding walkers, either with or without wheels. And then if you're going a longer distance, you might need something like a transport wheelchair that's lightweight and is easy to, uh, to help you go longer distances in the community. So first, Let's talk a little bit about canes. I'm sure these look incredibly familiar. These are two different handle types, a candy cane or curved handle, and then a straight cane. And that's really just about what you prefer. Uh, these are both adjustable, so they have a click mechanism that can allow us to make them taller or shorter. And they provide just a single foot at the bottom. So a, a small amount of extra support. Let's say, for instance, you, had a, you have a little injury on one side and you want to offload. Let's say your left ankle is a little sore. So you might use this device in your right hand. And then when the left foot is on the ground, the cane is on the ground and it just gives you a little extra support. Um, if we move on, you'll see that there are some special kinds of canes and accessories. So the hurricane is a really popular one. It's got a base that sort of swivels. So it will stand on its own and not fall down, ideally, like a standard cane with a single foot would always fall down if it wasn't if it wasn't hooked on something. So this is nice because it will stand if you're if you're um, going to sit for a minute or something like that. Over on the right hand side is a tripod base. This fits onto the bottom or the foot of a standard cane and it, it does much the same thing. It gives you a little extra support when you're walking and it will help the cane stand up on its own. If we move on to the next slide, you'll see that folding canes can be incredibly helpful when you travel. So often you'll see people getting on and off of airplanes or on and off of buses, and they're trying to throw that cane up in the, uh, in the overhead, and that's kind of a pain. So the, these are nice because they are easy to configure into a smaller space and put, say, in your, in your pocketbook or in your handbag or in your luggage. And they just have kind of a high tension wire sort of thing in the middle that allows you to collapse them. But they are still adjustable in terms of height. Moving on to the next slide, uh, a different kind of cane called a quad cane, instead of just a single base that touches the ground, it actually has four feet attached to a small metal platform. As you can imagine, this gives you even more leverage against the ground and more support against the ground. You see two different st uh, styles here, either a small base or a large base quad cane. Sometimes people benefit from this. Let's say someone either um, has limited utilization in one arm, or maybe they've had a stroke and so one arm isn't functioning quite as well so they can't really use a walker with two hands on but they need a, that kind of support that level of support so they might use a quad cane to give themselves just a little more contact with the ground um, moving on to the next slide Rollators are incredibly common. You'll, you've, I'm sure, seen these everywhere. They're, um, they're lightweight. They're easy to fold and put in the back of a car. They're incredibly convenient. So a couple of styles here. The one on the left is a three-wheeled rollator that has a basket, that thing, that, the plaid thing that looks like it came from Burberry. <laughs> uh, and so you can put anything that you need to transport into, into that bag and move it around. On the right-hand side, you'll see a four-wheeled rollator that has a seat. So if you need to take a break and sit for a moment, or let's say you're going to watch, you know, your grandkids play a, play a game somewhere, a softball game or lacrosse or whatever it might be, you can go out onto the field and, and sit on your rollator and be comfortable. Um, what's different about these types of walkers is that they have brakes and they have wheels on, in, in all of the different supports, there are wheels. So they're kind of like a, 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 a front wheel drive car in the sense that they maneuver pretty readily. There, that's an advantage and potentially also a disadvantage. You have to be able to manage a device like this and not let it get away from you. The brakes work just like bicycle brakes. So if you're going up or down an incline, you can slow yourself down if you need to. And then they will also lock. So if you do want to sit on the device, you can lock it in place before you turn to sit. So those are rollators. A couple of special types of rollators are shown here. The one on the left, also four wheels. You can see the brakes are kind of turned up end in this one. They work the same way, just like bicycle brakes, but you squeeze them this way as opposed to down. And you can see that the, the lady in this picture, she's not putting her weight down through her hands and her wrists, she's putting it through her forearms. So if someone had arthritis in their wrists or their hands and they needed to put the weight through their forearms or maybe an injury, they 
need to put the weight through their forearms, this is a nice option. You can see this is a really tall rollator too, so it really helps you stay up nice and, um, and posturally correct. She's got a bag here for transporting stuff as well as a seat. The version over on the right hand side of the screen, also a four wheeled rollator, very standard type of rollator, but this one you can get foot rests for. So it transitions or converts rather into a wheelchair. So if you need again to go a longer distance, let's say you're going to a medical appointment and the doctor happens to be all the way on the other side of the hospital from where you park the car, this might be something that will make you more comfortable going from entering the building all the way over to the medical appointment via wheelchair. Someone can just push you. Again, very lightweight, easily, easily detachable footrests, so incredibly convenient. Now let's move on and talk a bit about accessories. One nice thing about rollators, besides their uh, movability and, and just their um, overall ease of use is that you can, as I said before, you can use the device to carry things. So you don't have to physically be carrying a bag or carrying your, your coffee or your, um, your cell phone in your hand. You can have the device carry for you. So you can see on the left-hand side here, a couple of different options for baskets and for bags. You can see there's a water bottle and pens and a cell phone in that bag. And over on the right-hand side, individual types of holders, like a hook for a pocketbook, or a purse, depending on what part of the country you live in, <laughs> um, a cup holder, if you've got a coffee, a uh, cell phone holder. So uh, they're, they're really designed to make life as easy as possible for you. Keep your hands free so that you can manage the device. Now, if we move on, we'll talk about a standard type of metal aluminum folding walker. These are the kinds of, of walkers I'm sure you've seen people who come home from the hospital with this kind of device. Um, so the standard walker over on the left-hand side has four feet and, you know, say someone gets a knee replacement or a hip replacement and needs some extra help walking for a while while they heal. That is uh, what, what the standard walker over on the left-hand side would be. This is if someone can, can bear weight through both of their hands, right? Both of their hands are gonna be on that device. Um, alternatively, over on the right-hand side, a hemi walker is if someone really can't use both hands they only have use of one hand and one arm. Again, maybe a stroke, maybe an injury on the other side, but they need that four points of support on the ground. So that's called a hemi walker. You walk with that on the side as opposed to pushing it in the front. If we move on to the next slide, you'll see that these walkers are also equipped in some cases with wheels. So in this case, two wheels on the front and then just normal feet on the back. That's the case on the left-hand side of the screen. On the right, same concept, but this one also has the seat, much like the rollator. So this one you can sit on. Now, this kind of walker, unlike the rollator, is a little, a little bit, it takes a little more effort to kind of push. It's not heavy. It's very light, very easy to fold and put into the car, but it doesn't have brakes it doesn't have four wheels so you're going to you're going to be pushing a little bit more this makes this kind of walker a bit more stable um, for for people for whom managing a rollator which is those four wheels and the brakes if that's a little too much for someone then this kind of walker is probably a better option a little bit safer if we move on to the next slide you'll see that there's also an option in this style where someone can bear weight through their forearms. You see the lady on the right-hand side of the picture. So again, if she had a wrist fracture or something where she really wasn't supposed to be putting a lot of force through her hands, she can use these this forearm walker um, to bear weight through her forearms. Now, if we move on to the next slide, there's some accessories here that help keep your floors from getting all torn up. So instead of having two wheels and two straight legs, you can put some skis or some skates as is shown on the left hand side of the screen here on those back two feet. So these are designed to glide readily over things like carpet or wood floors. You see there's some cute designs like the tennis shoes and then you see the white ones have those little slippers. So if you're going over wood floors and you don't want to scrape them, you can put those little slippers on the skis. Tennis ball, same exact concept, just trying to protect the floor and and make it easier to move the device.
Uh, and then if we move on to the next one, a couple more accessories here, baskets, just like you would see on a rollator, slightly different style, and then trays on the right hand side. Well, the top tray there pops on and off of the walker versus the bottom tray, which actually stays affixed to the walker, but slides down to get out of the way if you're not using it. And um, last but certainly not least, we already talked about the rollator that you can add some footrests to to make it easy for longer distance uh, uh, transportation, you know, longer community distances you might need to go. Same concept here with these lightweight, very foldable uh, wheelchairs. They're really just designed to get you in and out of, of, of a space. They're not designed to sit in for long periods of time, um, but they, they make it a lot easier if you need to go a fair distance to get to where you're going. Uh, and then I think our last slide here, yep, yeah, is just a reiteration that any of these devices might look like they're appropriate for you and might might feel like the, the right fit, but it's really important to ask your doctor to refer you to a physical therapist to make sure that your, your uh, abilities, your strength, your, uh, your balance, all of those things are effectively assessed and then you're fitted with the correct device and trained in how to use that device because again, the whole goal of these assistive devices is to make life safer and decrease fall risk. So we really want you to have a clinical professional uh, making that assessment. And with that said, I'll turn it back over to Sarah. She can talk a little bit about some of the places where you can get these devices. Uh, yeah, so when we talked about the um, all the essential devices for dressing and grooming, I found those all through either Amazon um, or Maxi Aids, which is a a, a catalog uh, that they also have a really easy to use website, and then a website called ArthritisSupplies.com. So um, very readily available, very affordable. Um, the uh, medical supply stores that I listed below are places that would you'd be able to get um, those uh, rollators, um, the transport wheelchairs, that sort of thing. Again, I completely agree with Rochelle and I thank her for reminding us that these devices should be set up by a physical therapist or an OT um, because you wanna make sure you have the right and the best thing for your, for your condition. Um, and then I listed some local pharmacies that also carry some, some equipment, um, Andrews and Wellesley, Dedham and Dedham and Sullivan's and Rosendale. Um, they can also be very good resources um, to help you find whatever you might need in terms or um, help you get coverage for perhaps uh, a new walker or a wheelchair. Um, and then we just wanted to remind you, if you do find that, you know, something resonates with you from our talk and, and you'd like some more information about our services, um, as Lisa mentioned at the start of the presentation, um, we have outpatient PTOT speech and audiology at both, um, both of our uh, main campuses, uh, Newbridge on the Charles and Hebrew Rehab Center in Roslindale. Um, uh, uh, these services are generally covered with a, a referral from your doctor. Um, and if you call those numbers, the, the coordinators there will be happy to set you up and answer any questions you might have. Um, and then, you know, as, as Lisa mentioned, um, if you're homebound, um, uh, if you can't leave your home for appointments, um, if you're ill um, or after a hospitalization, you could uh, benefit from our home-based PTOT speech, nursing, private care. And, and lastly, the, uh, the Wolk Center for Memory Health, um, offering memory testing and diagnosis. This is based in our um, Rosendale campus. Um, they have neurology, dementia care management, and they're offering a lot of telehealth um, visits right now. So that's it. I know we covered a lot of ground um, and I thank you for spending the last 40 minutes with us. Um, I'd love to hear any questions or, or um, or anything, if, if, if you have any suggestions, if you've found the something that's been helpful in your life, that would be great to hear as well. I'm gonna go back to that other screen in case you needed some of those numbers. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, will, and you may have 
said, said this already, but I wasn't able to join uh, at 11 o'clock. Will you, are these slides available? Uh, the additional, uh, or should I be writing these numbers down? So um, this is Lisa. We're going to send out the presentation to anyone who um, participated, and we're also going to provide it to. I didn't mention at the beginning, but um, uh, you you may have heard about the presentation through the Needham um, Center at the Heights. Yes. Yes. And so we're going to send the presentation to them so they can share it as well to anyone that might not have been able to attend today. So yes, we'll send it out. And uh, well, actually, I don't. We don't have. We don't have your email because you didn't register, right? But um, we'll send it out to the Needham Senior Center. Um, I think. I thought I registered, but perhaps not. No, we 